Yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. 3-0. 3-0. We absolutely slapped Brighton yesterday, mate. I couldn't be more happy. I went into this game so I wasn't I was so apprehensive, you know. There was no optimism going into this, to be honest with you, pal. I just did not feel like we could get over the line after all of the heroics from Old Trafford, mate. I did not think that three points would be possible against Brighton. And my God, were we brilliant, mate. We were absolutely fantastic, mate. I couldn't I couldn't be more happy for the team. I couldn't be more happy for Marco. I don't know why Brighton just flooded everyone forward and were as open as anything that's open. I'm not going to be derogatory on this channel, mate. But it was an unbelievable performance. Evan Ferguson didn't have a shooting boost. And yes, we may have let him in a few times, mate. But as a whole... That was a textbook, phenomenal Fulham performance, mate. Shaggers, legends, please remember if you're new here, mate, do us a massive solid and subscribe just down below. Apologies for not uploading yesterday. Um, I had a couple of things to do yesterday night. Hence why I'm uploading this now, mate. And the title of this video, have I lost my head? Have I lost my head? Is Rodrigo Munez the new Alexander Mitrovic? I'm going to start off by saying that Munez has proven me wrong. And I would like to apologise to Rodrigo Munez. What is it? Five and five now. The kid is on another level, mate. From what I'm seeing right now, with him being 22 years old, what's to say that he couldn't be leading the line for Brazil in years to come? You know, the next World Cup, if Gabriel Jesus remains fit, why... I don't even think that's a... I don't even think that's a bold take, mate. I don't really think it is. The guy has surprised me. Someone has fired a huge rocket up his ass, mate. And now he's unplayable. He's absolute... He's, he's a dream, mate. He's a dream. We were kicking off over the last couple of months when we sold Mitrovic. We were going to be like, who is going to be that ideal replacement for Alexander Mitrovic? For me, Raul Jimenez is okay, but he's not a starter. We've known for so long that we needed to replace Mitrovic if that was a... Big money signing, Carlos Vinicius going to Galatasaray. And Rodrigo Munez has literally put his hand up in the crowd and gone, I'm that guy. It's me. I'm the chosen one. I am Alexander Mitrovic's replacement, mate. I used to think, what, even aspects of this season, him and Vinicius and Jimenez as well, far too timid in the air. Too scared to battle for anything. Aerially, you can, can kind of understand why Raul Jimenez isn't that guy and doesn't want to be that guy due to the injury. Um, Munez yesterday, it was like watching a Brazilian Alexander Mitrovic, mate. That bullet header was unfathomable. The guy is getting to know his body more and more as the weeks go on, mate. And you can see that Marco Silva and the coach and stuff are working very hard to create that Mitrovic clone. Goal and assist. That Harry Wilson first goal is absolutely unbelievable. But if you watch it back, mate, the way that Rodrigo Munez uses his body, gets clattered and still battles on to feed the ball through to Wilson was unbelievable. It was Mitrovic-esque. You just had those Mitrovic feels. And I'm not delving too much into the past, mate. And we know that form can go out of the window in an instant in the Premier League. Five goals in five. I completely forgot that we had Armando Broya. <laughs> and that's bad for me saying that. But until we started warming up yesterday, I, I was like, who's that? Who's that that's warming up? And I was like, mate, we've got Broya. I, I completely forgot. And I'm not Meaning to jump the gun and say that he's Mitrovic's replacement because he could go, what, the next... How many games we've got left? 11, 11 games in the season. He could go... He could go well at Casper with the Ghost, mate. He could go completely non-existent. Just that class assist and that bullet header as well. I, I love it. And I already mentioned an apology there. And I am sorry to Rodrigo Munez. I really am. Because I slagged both him and Carlos Vinicius off. And Carlos Vinicius is utter tripe. There's a reason why he's in the Turkish League. 22 years old, mate. 22 years old. Michael Carrick didn't fancy him at Borough. 
said he wasn't good enough. And now, it's a different ball game, mate. It's a completely different ball game. Right, for the rest of the game yesterday, um, pure suffocation by Fulham. Brighton trying to play this ticky-tacker football. And it didn't work. It didn't work. We did not give Lewis Dunk a moment to think on the ball. We did not give Steele a moment to think on the ball when they tried to play out from the back, mate. Everyone pressing so nicely. I didn't really think that... Oh, it's, I feel quite harsh because iwobi has been so brilliant. I don't think he had that same sort of impact down the left-hand side, of course. Willian coming back from injury. And then you have Iwobi, who's better on the right or going through the middle, mate. But... Working as a team, it was fantastic. It was brilliant viewing. It was like the Fulham that we saw last season. And I always hark back to that a little bit. You know, when teams would come to Craven Cottage, we'd go 1-0 down, and that's away from home as well. And we'd just press the life out of them and try and make something happen, mate. It's It feels like we've got some sort of good feels coming back to the club, even though finishing 10th and finishing above both Brentford and Chelsea is probably our aim for this season now. You just want to go out on a high. You just want to go out on a high. There were a few negatives yesterday. And I mean, we won 3-0. So I can't slag off anyone too much. So many wasted opportunities. There's winning 3-0 and we could have won 5-0. It got towards squeaky bum time when we were 2-0 up. And we had, what, two one-on-ones. I think it was Wilson and Pereira. And neither of them could finish their dinner. I don't I don't hate Harry Wilson for that. But Andreas Pereira, mate, holds on to that bloody ball far too much. It really... It really... Oh, I'm trying not to sweat. It really grinds my gears, mate. It really does my head in. Ed, edge of the box. And it goes for passes as well. It's not just shooting. He was one-on-one -on -one yesterday. So much space. And I think he had Lewis Dunk coming in to close him off. He had so much time to shoot and he decided to try and take it round Steele. I don't get it. Just put the bloody ball into the back of the net, mate. Adama Traore did exactly that when he came on the pitch and he's barely even got it on the field this season, Andreas. Jesus wept. Back yourself a little bit. Back yourself to make those crucial passes, which you normally do, and you are an integral part for the opening goal. Or is it second goal? I can't remember, but it was there in the mix. One-on-one, -on -one, don't get stage fright. You're in the Premier League, pal. You're in the Premier League. Back yourself. Back yourself. Well done to Adama Traore for finishing his dinner. Class. Brilliant. I want to say as well, I mentioned in the video last week when we beat Man United, no Palinia, no problem. I thought Sasha Lukic was an absolute beast yesterday in that midfield, mate. I thought he was brilliant and everyone needs to wax lyrical about him. I thought exactly the same against Manchester United last weekend. And you know there was those uh, reports sort of like coming into the beginning of 2024... Lukic wasn't really getting any game time and he was there, there was speculation that he that he said there were rumors that he said he, he was bored sitting on Fulham's bench and do you know what he's not sulked whilst he's on the pitch his body language has been phenomenal his recoveries in the middle and pressing forwards as well to try and get us out of tricky situations he's been unbelievable mate and I think now we're starting to see that class player come through. I would really like for when Palinia returns, and which he will return at the weekend because his suspension is over, I actually wouldn't mind seeing Palinia and Lukic in that midfield, mate. Have Lukic sort of playing more as a number eight so he can support the 10. If it's Andreas Pereira or if it's Tom Kearney, massive thumbs up for Sasha Lukic in the last two performances. The centre-back partnership, unbelievable as well. Since returning from AFCON, Calvin Bassey, class, he, mate, he, Evan Ferguson, man, he did not stand a chance. I know he missed a one on one, but Bassey, for the majority of the game, I'd say 98% of the game, he pocketed Evan Ferguson so easily. I think Tosin and Bassey are unbelievable, mate. One of the most underrated centre back partnerships in the Premier League. This is the partnership now. This is the partnership going forwards. I if I don't back Tim Ream playing left-sided centre-back. It's just, I just don't think that that is a valid offer if, if everyone's fit. I don't see Issa Diop getting back, to the, getting back into that team as well. Bassi and Tosin 
are the future of Fulham. If we can obviously get Tyson down to that contract in the summer, then we're laughing, aren't we? I feel like Calvin Bassey needs to get in his ear and go, do you know what, mate? If me and you stick together, something could happen here. Something could really happen here. Last of all, I thought the ref was absolutely awful, to be honest with you. Um, so many challenges going amiss. And it's just it's just pathetic. And I, I hate talking about referees. I hate talking about VAR. Because you just come to the same conclusions. And you just go around that same roundabout. It, it's just a broken record, to be honest with you, mate. And they just need to work their game. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Evan Ferguson, no yellow card for pushing Calvin Bassey. Almost felt like it was in like the neck or across the face. And... He just didn't really have control of the game, in my opinion, mate. Roberto De Zerbi, what was the game plan yesterday? I really don't know. So open in that second half, and it easily could have been 5-0 to Fulham. Shame we can't finish our dinner, it? Yeah, shame we can't finish our dinner. I wonder if he uh, left any VO5, you know, given the old hair dryer treatment in the dressing room afterwards, probably covered in uh, in gel, yeah. <laughs> the maddest haircut. I mean, I'm not going to rip on some of the haircut when I've got a forehead as big as this man. But it is so throwback to sort of like school disco 2006. Busted at the top of the charts. Roberto De Zerbi's just got that spiky doing and has never let go of it, mate. Right, that's it. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Uh, good luck this week with whatever, whatever you're doing. Um, we need a bit more positivity in the world, don't we? So all I want to say is, You've got this. Please remember to like and subscribe just down below, mate. Drop us a like. Leave us a comment. What did you think of the game? And I'll be back very soon. Fulham videos are back, baby. Fulham videos are back.